Since its inception, coinage has served the same basic purpose and function. It is no surprise that numismatics continues to uphold the traditions upon which it was based. Roman coins, for instance, often exhibited a specific pattern or concept which changed with each successive emperor. At other times, the initial pattern was so well liked that changes were often a mirror image of the original. Fast forward to 1942. Here you can clearly see that the Mercury dime evolved into the Roosevelt dime, which honored the man who is credited with winning us World War II. Other changes were obviously an evolution of the pattern itself. No matter what the specific date of the currency, whether it is a coin or paper currency, the concepts remain the same. George Washington is considered to be the founder of our country so the initial currency would honor him most. Something that is copied always has a point of initial origin. It is by looking at the outer ripples that the initial causation can be determined. The bigger the droplet, the bigger the ripples. What could be more American than Captain America, who bears the crest of courage and currency? But why was a specific pattern chosen, and what do they have in common with eagles and Egypt? It is generally agreed that Egypt was the first contemporary culture to start using the eagle as a symbol of power and to represent their gods. This pattern was developed and copied by subsequent nations, such as Rome, which often honored their emperors with an eagle on their tomb. The use of eagles as representations of power is nothing new or secret. It is only when the particular pattern of symbology is used that a pattern emerges. Consider the crest of the United States of America and compare it to past coins and numismatics. Certain hallmarks, such as an eagle and shield, holding olive branches and arrows, emerge. This concept has been repeated throughout the history of the United States of America and has been used to commemorate and honor those that founded our country and worked to preserve it. The late 1700s were a tumultuous time for America, a time of the birth of the nation and of war. It was not until 1793 that the U.S. Mint first manufactured, or minted, the 1793 chain cent, which was due in part to George Washington's wishes to have a neutral coin that did not represent a monarchy. Since 1793 has been established as the formation of the U.S. Mint, what about dates prior to that, such as 1792 or even 1791? What were those coins like? More importantly, how did those coins influence subsequent coins? As can be seen here, a common practice in the 1860s was to copy colonial coins with varying results and numismatic interpretation. Copies nearly always paled in comparison to the original thing. Unfortunately, the original was often a copy of something else. The 1792 Getz cent was, in fact, a copy of the 1791 Eagle cent. Quote, Getz created a coin using John Gregory Hancock's large and small Washington cents as models. The large and small eagle cents of 1791 were obviously copied, as the Getz cent copied the small eagle cent. But, interestingly enough, the large eagle cent itself was copying a coin, a coin that predated it by two years. Unfortunately, a 1789 Washington copper is so rare there is only one in known existence. 
The original pattern was so well liked that it was copied and copied again. But much like the get sent in the 1860s, the original pattern was copied and known as a Robinson token. Due to the ultra rarity of the original 1789 Washington copper, the Robinson is often attributed to false sources. Unfortunately, coins that exist as a URS-1 in rarity are not an easily tradable commodity and therefore do not receive the attention of more common and easily tradable coins. Perhaps even more disturbing is why coin and numismatic experts would confuse the original for a copy even though the weight difference is 250 grains versus 186. There are also other references throughout history to a George Washington 1789 coin. These precede the 1860s and clearly show a history and pattern of a numismatic design that was deeply influential and desired. In the 1960s, Peter Rosa continued his family's tradition of numismatics by borrowing a series of coins from the British Museum in London to create the most comprehensive set of American colonials that had ever been created. Coin Replicas continues the use and sale of coins made from Rosa's dies, and even Rosa's replicas find themselves duplicated as an important piece of American history. When looking at things that are ultra rare, it is important to consider what the origin. The Declaration of Independence, for example, is based upon the Magna Carta itself. So, when looking at numismatics, it is important to look at the pattern, the source, the origin, and the ripple effect of the resulting numismatics and consequences that they had.